I have to say I have zero understanding for the nostalgia that people have for internal combustion engines. And I'm an internal combustion engine performance car guy. I've been doing it for 35 years. So I've been involved in development of performance cars for practically my entire life. In my past, I've been involved in uh, Formula One, World Rally Carring, various uh, performance vehicles uh, in all aspects of the automotive industry. I have a fair amount of experience in this, in this area. Development of cars really never stands still. Technology moves on. You can't really look in the past. Uh, you learn from the past, but you can't look to the past. Uh, you have to look to the future. Before you actually build a car, you have to do paper studies. You have to figure out exactly what do you want to actually achieve? What is your goal? And we do that on the one part by measuring competition. What do they achieve? Uh, figuring out, can we beat that, what the competition has already, has already done? Because it makes no sense just to repeat what, what's already on the marketplace. So we also always want to be better. And then once you've done that, you have to decide what is the character of your car. Um, a car really has character. I remember one of my colleagues once said and had a pretty emotional argument with his chief engineer that a car has a personality. A car has a soul. And uh, if you're a car enthusiast, perhaps you, you might agree with that. Through the two and a half years or three years that we're working on this car, we constantly refer back to the character map to measure ourselves against that. Are we on target? or have we deviated? Character Map tries to capture that, that character, that, that soul of the car a little bit. Uh, what does it sound like? What does it feel like? What is it that you want to achieve in this new product that you're working on? We were lucky uh, in that we had a good starting platform. The NE uh, is already itself a very successful car, one of the leading EVs uh, in the marketplace. We look to see what we can do to improve uh, and make Ionic 5 a real N vehicle. We've made some um, pretty significant um, internal body changes, uh, some suspension um, mounting point uh, changes, and that'll help the performance of the car. And as I said, the external changes, changes are driven primarily by aerodynamics and by styling. Uh, we see where we have to make some changes, where we have to make modifications to bring the end character into the uh, vehicles. Testing on a lake like this it gives us the opportunity to test the cars at their limits and we can see if there are some more fundamental changes that we have to make, if we're on the right uh, track, uh, and gives us some good guidance uh, for the next months uh, of development work. I like testing. <laughs> I just like driving cars. Doesn't matter where. So um, the big challenge for EVs is, of course, um, vehicle weight. Uh, we're significantly heavier. All EVs are significantly heavier um, than uh, internal combustion engine. So we have to look at where are we on the weight, what the weight distribution is, what's the um, center of gravity. N already benefits from a lot of efforts uh, done on the basic Ionic 5 for uh, weight reduction. But our focus is making sure that the powertrain is where it needs to be with respect to response and drivability. And of course, what uh, the N uh, variants are very, very famous for is the steering, the ride and handling. And that's really been a major point of our focus. One of the things that is of great advantage um, on an EV uh, N is the powertrain performance. Uh, it's of no comparison to internal combustion engines, but EVs offer so much more capability, so much more performance, so much better response. It's a different world. Uh, the potential is, is huge. So I always try to explain to people the opportunity that we have in EVs um, because there's so much software and so much software control and with that opportunity to control so many things uh, in the EVs that uh, it opens up a whole new world um, for the chassis controls but also the powertrain uh, controls and that's all software based, that's all calibration based, it's all writing some new software, writing new requirements that we might need 
and uh, you can change really the whole character, the whole soul, if you will, of the car. A car, any car, is really a complete system. And so it really has to be viewed as a, as a one unit, a complete system. It has to work together at the end of the day. But of course, the, the individual systems are already highly complex. Steering, suspension, performance of the vehicle, the stiffness of the vehicle is very important. Body um, items are very important. All uh, feeding into the response of the vehicle, which is very important for an N vehicle. Of course, the EV vehicles uh, give an advantage also. The response is tremendous, uh, particularly on this NEN. It's unbelievable how quickly the, uh, the car reacts, much better, much more so than internal combustion engines. So it will be uh, very interesting to see how the public reacts to this car. We're working closely together with our colleagues in uh, Korea and uh, Namyang. We have the HPV team here, the high performance team here, and we have a high performance team in Korea, in uh, Namyang. And part of that means that we travel to Korea on a regular basis for joint tuning sessions, joint development sessions, and they also come here to Europe. And uh, the next weeks are quite critical uh, for us because uh, we need to identify are we done with the hardware? Uh, can we now focus only on tuning aspects and software aspects, or do we need to make some fundamental hardware changes? It's really an ongoing process um, until we reach SOP. Our goal is always to have one model uh, for the whole world, and this remains the same for the end here.